Okay. Hit record. All units are right, go. All right. So we're on the home stretch. Today is the 30th. I just wrote my devotional for tomorrow, the 30th. Uh, that means we got 10 days left. So we finish middle of next week. I think it's either, I think it's Wednesday. Um, so this is our last full week with 40 days. Today's mission is to go over our vision statements. And I had an idea of how we were going to do this today. I wanted to just break us up into one-on-ones for about five minutes. I'll explain the vision statement, how it's different than the mission statement. And then you can kind of work together. So all you need is a piece of paper. You have your, a new friend uh, with you when we do this. And you don't have to have it polished, but I'd like you to get a general idea of what you're thinking. My best advice for this is to think about your obituary. You know, what, what is someone going to say about you at, at your funeral? Um, so usually it's at least two sentences, maybe three. It could be four, but sometimes less is better. But by all means, go ahead and, and, and just write away. So I'll go ahead and I'll explain mine. So let me read my mission statement. I know it by heart now is um, to serve um, to serve God and imitate Christ by exhausting my gifts for his kingdom. That's it. That's the mission every day. So why do I get up? That's the mission. The vision is the long term. It's the it's the macro, not the micro. So my vision in my life is to influence others to be the person that God created them to be by my actions and words and interactions and to leave a legacy for my family to love Christ and to make a difference in, in this life by impacting people by giving them hope for their future. So in a nutshell, it's kind of what I want to be, I guess the best way to put it is, what do you want to be remembered by? What did you do? These are action, actionable steps. I'm thinking, I'm looking right at Justin. He's right below me. Justin, so I'd say for you, I mean, we talked about you know, your mission and, and where, you're, where you're headed, like with, um, with the trash and, and everything you're doing with that. So if that's the legacy that you want to leave, that's part of it, you know, besides being a great father um, and husband, but you got to be somewhat specific on what you're saying to the person with your vision. So if you read it out loud, someone would be like, man, that's exactly what I, I see you doing. And that's how exactly how I see you being remembered by. Does that make sense? Yeah, definitely. Okay. So if we're, we're a go, you guys got some notes that I hopefully guided you with. Um, let's see, I haven't done this in a while, but I will break you up into groups. We have exactly 10 people here. So let's see here. Breakout rooms. Makes it easy. Five. So five minutes. I'm looking at my clock, Justin. Uh, I like at least come back together before you leave. Okay. So five minutes on the go. Talk about your vision. Get to know each other again. Some of you probably haven't seen each other in a while. So here we go. Just collect on the bottom, just click um, your room. By yourself, I saw. You look so tired. I'm so sorry. <laughs> You had a long drive. You had a long trip, huh? Yeah. It's a long day. Yeah, I'm sure. You doing okay? Yeah. Good. Did you get back today? Yeah. Around uh, five o'clock. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Then you must be tired. Jeez. Are you yeah. I haven't really gotten much sleep, um, which I haven't slept well since I've been in Cleveland. Yeah. And, um, I tried to do as much for my daughter before I left yesterday 
Mm -hmm. you know, like finish the laundry, make sure everything was in the dishwasher or washed. And so I didn't take a nap. Mm -hmm. And by 11, 11 last night, I just crashed. Wow. But so um, the odd thing was Paul was coming back from Sarasota at the same time. And he was like an hour behind me. Mm -hmm. So um, he came and stayed with me at my hotel. And then we traveled together today, which was really nice. Yeah. Um, Cause it made it more bearable. Yeah. But um, so it was good. It was a good day. It's just really tiring. Yeah. Well, get some rest tonight. You need that. So we won't be too long tonight. Mr. Fabish is with us. Can you see him, Chas? No. Hey, Chas. Hey. How are you? I'm on my, oh, yeah, now I see oh, you. You're on your, oh, you're on your phone. Okay. Yeah, that's why. Yeah, I how to get it on my computer when you send it through the WhatsApp. Okay. I've Gotcha. Um, so, Chris, I know you just joined us. We went over a vision statement that you're going to have. Yeah. The difference between the mission and the vision is more like more leaving your legacy, like what someone would say at your at your funeral. So, what's your? Yeah, dad? I would even write it as like, Chris did what? What did he do to leave an impact or an impression in people's lives? So if you have a piece of paper, I mean, you don't have to say everything right now, but I would just write down a couple ideas that you think that you want to be remembered by. And then Chas, you had one from the summer, right? Did you, we created one in the summer. Well, I had done, I had, I had created the slogan for my business. Yeah. Yeah. Was teaching mental performance with God given principles. Mm -hmm. So I thought. I would just use that. Mm -hmm. um, but I was talking to Paul about it and I was like, I'm trans, I'm trans, I'm going to be transitioning into the mental performance this year. Yeah. So he said to tell you with glasses, I have 2020 vision. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's fun. He's always going to be funny, oh, yeah. but um. But I thought with the slogan, that's going to be what I'm transitioning to. Okay. Then the mental performance side. Yeah. So I don't know if you would consider that a vision. I think it's a short-term ver ver uh, vision right now. You know, I would, I, I don't think that's, it could be long-term if that's the direction you want to go for the rest of your life. You know? I want to go back to school for that. Yeah. Well then if, if someone said, this is the way I would put it, Chas. Let's say you have 35 years left on the earth, okay? And yeah. someone said, I remember her as a great mother, grandmother, and mental performance coach, and a, a literally a cheerleader in your court at all times. Yeah. Would you be happy with that? Um. Well, my vision is to go back to school to hone in on so, the sportology of it. So that would be that would be your short term goal right now. The vision is the, looking at the very end and working your way back. So, like, if I want a PhD in sports psychology, mm -hmm. my long term goal mm -hmm. to do something amazing with that yeah mm -hmm. that's a, that's what i, I would guess, like a christian dr michael gervais oh yeah i know yeah i got it i know exactly what you're talking about he was on a great podcast was it with ed my i can't remember who which podcast what? he was on with it was really good he's putting out a bunch i'm sure yeah he has his own chris fabish said the finding yeah. mastery is that what it is finding mastery yeah yeah I'm going to write this down now. It's really good stuff. The, the, I mean, he's had Olympians. He's had, I was just listening to one the other day where it was, um, it was some entrepreneur. Like it was just a, 
so he's got people from all walks of life but he, like he's he's done a lot of work with the the seahawks in the past because i think he's based out of seattle yeah what's yeah his what's his name again michael gervais i'll send you the podcast okay I'll send it. yeah it's gonna be a lot easier so um so chris yeah i love the idea though chess I, I know exactly where you want to go and i love it um what do you see yourself doing for the rest of your life basically <laughs> Oh, wow. Loaded question, I know. Loaded. Yeah, that one's, that's easy. Um, well, I, so I had written something down. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, and I'll, maybe I'll start with that. Um, so I, had, I, I wrote down, deepening my relationship with God, family, and friends by being more like Jesus every day. By staying in the word and listening to the voice of God, I will be a light in the darkness. Mm -hmm. That's good, yeah. It felt very broad. Mm -hmm. um, so it was more of a, uh, the starting point, but, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, some of it, you know, I was being very specific about, you know, just the order of God, family and friends, deepen and deepening my relationships. You know, there's something I wanted mm -hmm. to, to be in there about deepening my relationships. That's <clears throat> honestly something that has been a, uh, I don't know if I want to say a struggle. Mm -hmm. It's just not my strength. Yeah. Um, and, you know, groups like this and and the council yeah um they, in, yeah. yeah yeah i don't know they almost had forced me to do it um but it's it's uh it gives me structure in yeah. which i can deepen those those relationships um so you know i think that i wanted i know i knew i wanted something about creating and developing better relationships mm -hmm. um because um that's just something that I want to, that I want to work on. Yeah. So uh, the way I look at it in education and you're in education as well, and chess is continuing education mm -hmm. is in the, in the center of your web of how, how you write this is it'd be relationships. And then all around the web would be, you know, your relationship with God and Christ, your family, you know, um, maybe your student body, wh wh whatever it is. And maybe your customers, you know, in yeah. your side business. So that's how I would write it is I would write it in a way that um, be very specific at the beginning, like a thesis to, to deepen my relationship with God, my, my family, uh, friends, um, and then all the way down to, you know, in, in future customers and to to give and the part I can't, I'm not going to put words in your mouth, but like what, yeah. how, how would that look? And then what would it, how would they remember you by because of those strengths and relationships? That's what I would put. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's the way I would write it. Because if they go to your, when they go to your funeral, they're like, man, Chris, would, he was just always there. You know, he was, he was always a man of character. You know, he, he wore his, faith on a sleeve and it was just a, a a gentleman to everyone that he was around so i guess right. look at key characteristic words and then same thing with you chas i would think the same thing what words what specific words would you want to be remembered by so mm -hmm. i'm gonna write that down myself you know i think giving is a big one for me giving yeah i, I would agree with you because you know for yeah. So that, yeah, write that in yours too. So Justin's got to leave. So we said five minutes. Uh, I'm going to bring everybody back. Let's see. I'd probably do a broadcast. I'll, I'll just do it. I'll close them. 60 seconds anyways. All right. So we got one minute. Um, Chris, real quick. I know I sent you the text yesterday. Um, I mean, I would be honored if you were able to help design the cover. Yeah. Um, I was talking to, I forget who it was, my brother or someone in my family. I even thought about a white, literally a white cover with that Navy blue from the American flag. Okay. Freedom. And then to ascend, but freedom really, you know, pretty bold. Right. To ascend. I thought about putting the American Eagle in gold ascending and then in red um 
it would be, I'll, I'll share it with you. I think it says okay. it's a, a guidebook to excel in this life and after or for, for okay. me. and then my name at the bottom. So awesome. yeah, I'll, okay. I'll send you. Yeah. Just, you want to just do the, the, I don't see anybody or who's is John there. It, it, it automatically talk. mutes you when you come out of breakout. Everybody needs to unmute. Yeah. We're all back. And we're all back. Okay. So, Justin, um, before you leave, I know you got to go. Any any parting words you like to give to the group for this week? Um. Yeah, I just I really I appreciate seeing um, all the communication. I'm really gonna try this week to get um, better engaged in the uh, in the chat. Um, I do read it and it's usually like super late at night and I, I, I have to like go through and catch up on everything. So I'm going to try to get better at engaging in that. Um, I've had fun trying to dive into um, the, the vision statement part. And I, I've, I've, man, I've probably written and rewritten this thing, you know, four or five times. And, I, I, what I've, what I've come down to now, I think it's a very, um, simplified version of that, that, you know, I want to refine it a little bit more and make it, um, you know, back it with some scripture. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I really have enjoyed, um, tinkering on that a little bit. So, um, that's it. Yeah. So the mission this week is to, um, have all your mission statements done and then the post I'll, I want to post them on Sunday next week uh, before our meeting because we only have two more meetings left after this and the meeting next time will be about the BHAGs, the goals and all those areas and then the last one will be what did you learn from this 40 days so this goes fast we're already at the home stretch we're rounding third base now so all right, Justin, you go be with your, your daughter, you said, right? Yes, sir. Thank you, guys. Love y'all. Thanks, bro. Love you too, man. Yeah. Have a good one. You too. So what I, I hope everyone had some time to, to meet with uh, someone new, which is always, I always like to do this because it kind of puts you outside your comfort zone, probably not with your accountability partner. Was anybody with their accountability partner? Oh, Sam, you were? Yeah. My dad. That's good, yeah. though. That's good to see yeah. each other face to face. Um, can someone real quick just give me a breakdown on um, how the session went? And do you, is there? Let's start with this question: Does anybody have a question in regards to their vision statement and how to get started writing it, or just to tweak it? Let's let's start right there. I don't have a specific question, but I'll go. I'm, I am having more trouble with it than I'm having with the mission statement. Mm -hmm. um, I, I ran it by your dad. I'll give it to you later, but I'm still working on it. It's not done yeah. by any means, but it's, it's, I just don't know why it's more difficult with the, mm -hmm. the mission was easy. The vision is more, more difficult. And I guess it's because I don't, I mean, I think you gave good examples of like how to think about it from a, from a, but I don't really think about what I want people to say. I don't really care what they say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you know yeah, yeah. and and it's a little bit it seems a little bit um if i did my mission i'll leave it to them to 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 say what they want to say that kind of doesn't you know to well, me it doesn't matter as much but <laughs> yeah, I, I understand what you're saying and chris actually we were talking about chris's vision um he was focused on one specific area which was relationships so then we kind of it's called the web design or you, you put relationships in the middle and then what specific relationships do you want to have in those areas you know with, with god and christ and then your wife your family um your students he's a guidance counselor and then he has a business so his customers so what specific action words would people at least say about you and, and how you treated them in those relationships that's another way to look at it okay if that, if that helps anybody Like the words I would use for Chris is he's always genuine. Like I, I've, 
every time I've talked to Chris, he just, he's honest, sincere, and he's just been a gentleman. Now, cornbread, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'd say redneck. I'd say hillbilly from the south. He's just a hardworking blue collar. Who doing? Right, right. What's that, Josh? I said, who doing? Yeah, who doing? Yeah. No, I love cornbread to death, man. He's got the heart of Christ. So that's that's a, a statement I would say for cornbread. So the beautiful thing about the vision statement is really to hone in on, on words that define you. So maybe it's not about somebody else, how they view you. Maybe it's how you view yourself. And then maybe you should run it by your significant other. Hey, honey, do you view me as this? And I, heck no, what are you talking about? Patient, and you have the worst patience in the world. Loving, gentle, and eh then it ain't right. I'll tell you that. It better be the, the best phrase I could say for character is somebody who's consistent with their actions all the time. You can't play the field of saying, oh, when I go to work, I'm this super nice guy or girl. And then I go home and I'm a witch or a, you know, a drunken fool. You can't do that. You got to be consistent. That's what life's about. And that's why I like about this program is you're trying to learn how to be consistent in all these little areas. It's hard to do. It's very hard to do. And it's not about checking the boxes off. It's about being intentional and in how you're going to improve in each area. So if you check a box off, I think who said it today about pr uh, prayer? Was it Kevin? Kevin and um, I think he started this weekend. So those of you who don't follow WhatsApp, like some of us do, um, it's okay, just, but there's a lot of heartfelt things on there uh, and opening up. Callie had a hard week. Um, Scott is continuing to have hard days because it's passing his brother. So the more you're raw or real and opening up to each other, the more that the fellowship of this group can help you. But if you keep things in, you create a void in your heart <laughs> and you can't let things heal you know jesus was the ultimate comforter the peacemaker and what he did so well was and he's a perfect he is the perfect person to follow the lead on is that he he just had this unconditional way of showing you how much you were valued when you didn't value yourself there's nothing like that to give someone hope so I don't want to talk the whole time. I'm sorry. I, I would, please someone else um, either talk about the vision. Or we'll wrap up in five minutes. Talk about either. It doesn't have to be about the vision. Maybe it was just about your week. Go ahead. I'm open the, open the doors for conversation. John, I think I got my vision statement. I was telling Justin that uh, mine as of right now for 2022 is uh, to be a good husband, a good father, lead my family well and lead by example. Um, probably in the last six to eight months, I realized how much my kids are watching me more so than they listen to what I got to say. But if I'm not willing to back up my words with action, they're not going to follow through. Like at the beginning of the year, I told them that every day they had to start having 30 minutes of intentional physical activity mm -hmm. and uh it didn't matter about them going outside and playing they had to be intentional whether that be doing some type of uh you know little workout calisthenics in the house or going out hiking in the woods whatever and uh you know so far they're following through with that it's kind of surprised me even when it's gotten down real cold my 11 year old my wife's told me she's been out Glove, sock hat, jacket. She's like, I got to get this, got to get this 30 minutes in. So dad ain't on my back. <laughs> really? So yeah, it's, it's kind of, it's tripping me out, but, uh, I just want to, uh, you know, I tell them all the time. I don't, when I'm laying in my box, I don't want them up there talking about what the best day of TV was we had. Yeah. I wanted to be like, y'all remember when we did this with dad, do you remember when we did this with mom and dad or, or I want, you know, I'm with Sam. I don't 
at the end of the day, I'm not real concerned about what people got to say about me, but if I can encourage somebody or push somebody and then be like, man, this guy, he's a big dude. He's out there getting after it. He's motivating me. If I can have a few people stand up on the day I'm laying up there and say that, and that encourages other people, then I feel like that'd be, that'd be a pretty good deal. Well, from man to man, you're doing it, son. You hear me? And I, I appreciate I, it. I'm trying. You know what? I really appreciate you sending that post today on WhatsApp about how you want to be in the top five and how that's motivating to you. We all should have some sort of motivation. We should. You know, even if it's external like that in the physical sense. But if you don't have a goal somewhere, and you're just, I call it floating down the river. You're not having an impact. You're not hitting and you're not influencing anybody. So Josh, I'm real, I'm real proud of you. I love what you're doing. And um, you just reminded me because last year we did this fired up, it was called fired up February. Um, and I'll, I'll, maybe I'll share it with you. I'll take a picture because it's about your kid doing more physical activity, but also reading. And my son, Ben, he had a hard time reading. Um, and he actually had the highest uh, improvement scores on his map testing uh, this, this last quarter. And we were so proud of him because it's all about improvement, right? That's what we're here. You didn't sign up for 40 days to just go, I want to meet some nice people and it'd be great. No, it's not. It's part of it. What the heck are you doing to get better? You're going to be in the box one day. Josh, I'm glad you said that. You're going to be in the box one day before you know it. And you don't know when that day is going to be. You can't assume it's going to be in 50 years or 40 years. I live my life like tomorrow I'm in the box. And when I live my life that way, you have a passion. It's like relentless pursuit of just giving it all, your all. And that's why exhausting all my gifts is in my mission statement. I want someone to say, damn, that guy was just on fire every time he was around people. It's not about me, though. It's about what he gave me to give to others. That's the point. That's the principle. If you only knew when God spoke to you, but he keeps telling me every day, we are in this together. The more you're in his word and the more you could just listen, the more you'll understand the path he provides for you. But it's a path of action. It's not a path of passivity. And when you think you got it bad, it don't. You have internet, water, warmth, everything you need at your fingertips. I don't want to hear one complaint about anything. Zero. So start moving the ball forward for you first, for your family, and obviously for the kingdom. That's the mission. And then I know you're tired. Damn it, I get tired every day. You know, it's part of it. You know, I get up though. Hey, you know what? This is a great, and I'll stop because I can talk all day about this. You could take a 15 minute nap and recharge your battery. So suck it up. Literally, you need that rest and recuperation. But then after that, go back and hammer it. Go back, get after it. But there is a point of healing and, and reflecting and resting. And I, that's what I love about Sundays. And Bill Crow, I know you're listening. You're, you're the one who made me really think about the importance of the Sabbath. You, you know, we don't think about it, but in the old days, people, things were shut down for a reason. It was very intentional. Think of Chick-fil-A, right? They shut down because they recharges your battery and actually could do more in six days than most companies can do in seven. So there is a beautiful art of the reflection re restoration period and rest, but the rest should be in his word. It shouldn't, it shouldn't just be watching TV all day, be a zombie. The rest should be in his word and he'll give you strength because you honor him with that time. God, he's so good. Oh, you, 
the more you keep pushing into him, the more he'll keep revealing to you. And I, I can't even explain it until you hit that point. But it's so beautiful. Because you start seeing with a different lens of how life should be. It's not through your, your eyes anymore. It's through his. So everybody, I, I encourage you. Make this week your best. You got one, you have 10 days left, but make this week your best. And it is not about the physical only, trust me. It's not about that. I want you really to be intentional about prayer first. If you miss your morning prayer, shame on you. Shame on you. You're telling me you can't give your first and all to God. You have to not out of a routine, but a, a true stillness with him. God, he just will give you so much if you do that. And make sure you go to bed every night, same thing, a thankful heart. Please do, do that this, this week, please. And to finish up, and I, I just don't want you guys to go back to Egypt. That's basically what I'm trying to tell you. That's it. I, it fires me up because I know the path of the human, and, and I'm, we're all part of this, the human side of us, the chaos in our brain, the, the lack of calmness and peace, and we Americans and, and Canadians too, and Kevin, for you, the busyness of life. It's ridiculous. We want, we want our comforts. We want your cake and eat it too. Learn the word sacrifice. Sacrifice your time for him. Please. Build strong relationships. Be present with him. Sam, go ahead. Yeah, I was, uh, I had a, I was running right before our meeting started and uh, they, they're on Exodus and something struck me today, the reading. So this part of the story today, I can't tell you chapter and verse, but it's pretty early in the book of Exodus. Um, the first time Moses goes to the Pharaoh, he says, let my people go. Let us go to the desert for three days so we can worship our God. And the, and the, and the Pharaoh says, if you have time to worship, you're not working hard enough. <laughs> so it's not, it's not good, but it's allegorical. So the, he says, we're not going to give you your straw. So instead of us giving you your straw to make bricks, now you got to go get your own straw and you still got to make the same amount of bricks. And I was thinking about this program and, you know, it's like uh, uh, gold is refined by fire, right? So the first step into this the Exodus story, that's the first step in deliverance. That is the first step in the people's deliverance out of Egypt. The first few chapters, you know, Moses is that's the first act. So it's like you need this period of intensity, this period of extra, this period of beyond, this period of discomfort. And uh, there are other allegories we could draw to. And so it's not the only one, but it was appropriate for today on the uh in the reading from Exodus about that, um, that first time of trial, uh, the people had to work twice as hard to get the same thing. And then they still, they still didn't get what they <laughs> And the funny thing is, of course, after that, they don't go from the, they don't leave exit. They don't leave Egypt and go to the promised land. They go from Egypt into the desert for 40 years. <laughs> so that's the other thing, but, um, yeah. God, you know, brothers, <laughs> you know, he called them on this the phrase never, be out of my head forever those stiff-necked people yeah <laughs> stiff-necked people are you a stiff-necked person with because of your pride or we all are <laughs> yeah but i no, i, I we all are because uh, look we're all sinners but how can you be refined a refined sinner in following his path and to be honest, it, it is through this program of obedience, discipline, and fellowship. And if you can't be in the word, then you will not grow. I know it's, I don't want this to happen, but I know this happens. And I'm going to end it here because you guys are a tight group. 
after 40 days, this is what's going to happen. <clears throat> put your book down, put your Bible down slowly after time. Maybe not entirely, maybe just less. And you go back to what you used to do. And you're going to be like, I'm missing something. Seriously. You'll be, you'll be, you'll be thinking about it. Man, I really, I missed those Zoom calls for 40 minutes or I, I missed the, the conversations, the support, the love. I just missed someone holding me accountable because I need it. So I'll end there. I'll just, I want you to think about that though. Anyone like to close us in prayer? Sure, I will. Thank you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Good and gracious God, thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for this family, for this, for this group. Thank you for the desert. Thank you for the opportunity to focus our lives on you and uh, help us to continue strong for the last 10 days and beyond. And uh, may, we, may we grow in our, in our hearts, in our minds, in our souls and grow closer to you and closer together and uh, help us to live our missions and become our visions and uh, help guide that, sh shine a light for us on what you want us to be and uh, help us to attain it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you, Sam, I appreciate it. Everyone, just, I just want everyone to just try your very best to not only finish strong, but, but to continue to be with one another in the way that Christ lived for us and to be a true disciple and to allow the Holy Spirit to come to you to be your comforter, but also to go out boldly to this world who needs Christ so desperately. You understand that? They need to know who Yeshua is and why he came here to save you. They need to know that. So be good. Continue communication. It's always great. Pour out your heart in any form. And um, I love every one of you. And I really appreciate you being here. It means the world to me. All right. All right, guys. You guys have a great night, okay? Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody.